Okay, so today I'd like to talk to you about a concept very near and dear to my heart called FM synthesis. I guess some people pronounce it FM synthesis, but I prefer to call it FM. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the, I just want to touch on this very briefly, the, like, or explain this kind of very, very briefly. So the core concept here, which I think everybody, most people know, so this probably won't be news to everybody, but I think if this is your first time playing around with FM synthesis, or if you're just getting started, or if you've always been curious why it makes the sounds that it makes, some kind of key insights here that are interesting to know. Okay. So FM stands for frequency modulation, right? So we're going to modulate, we're going to change the frequency, um, right? So the way this works is you have one, um, or you have a, a couple of these different oscillators. So these all generate a tone separately. And then we can plug them into each other in different ways. So to illustrate just this first concept of like frequency modulation, what I'm going to do is instead of using one of these guys to modulate the frequency, I'm going to use the LFO. Um, so let's go, we're, we're on low here, and let me play a note. Right, so we've got our note playing, as you can hear, hopefully. It's not too quiet. Um, maybe we'll make it a, a saw. Okay, so we've got our, our tone here, right? And now I'm going to keep the rate super low, super slow, right? The LFO is super slow. Okay, so now we are modulating the frequency. Um, so we're, we're just pitching it up and down, right? And what you'll see... like that it's doing that. All right, yeah, that makes more sense. I don't know why we're getting these kind of two oscillations. Anyway, whatever. So just stick with me here. All right, so now we're modulating the pitch up and down, right? If we set this to, this is the speed here. So we got low, high, and sync. So let's go to high, and we'll set it to the lowest one. So you can see once we get to a certain speed, it's so fast that it just sounds like a change in the texture of the note. Right? We can cure it now with the sine wave just for fun. It's like once this modulator gets fast enough, then it starts to um, uh, then it starts to sound like it's just a change in the texture, right? Even though we're changing the the pitch by a lot, right? Remember? we're changing the pitch a, a ton. It's going up and down octaves and... But eventually we hear the, the original tone back. Right? Okay, so that's kind of the core idea here, right? The, the sort of eureka moment or the interesting part about FM synthesis is that if this tone like let's pretend that this is our lfo now let me just give you a quick demo of what that is sort of like so let's start with a really low oscillation come on baby oh. so this is how much we're changing the frequency right you can hear it. it's like really a large range Right? Same as our LFO. Same sort of sound. And now, if we have 
this oscillator in tune with this oscillator. So they're playing the same pitch. Now we don't really hear that oscillation. We just hear a change in timbre. And because they're the same pitch, we get these nice, like it still sounds like a note. Whereas if we're over here, let's go up here. It's like harder to hear the original note, right? So, yeah. So that's kind of the cool thing. Now, when you look at this course pitch knob here what you're looking at is this number is we're just multiplying the incoming pitch so say i play uh <clears throat> a or goddamn i don't know the frequencies of the different pitches but whatever say i play c um what we're doing here is multiplying that frequency by this number so that might sound complicated if you're not into math like I am. Um, but this is actually really straightforward in terms of what it means musically. If you take a, um, a frequency and you multiply it by two, then you get the octave above. Then if you multiply that one by two, then you get the octave above. So what happens if you take the original one and multiply it by three? Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. Okay. Uh, see, that's where it starts getting weird. It's like we have all these, these are multiples of the, of the first frequency, but they're not necessarily this like doubling that you get when you go up by octaves. So once we get into the higher numbers and we get all these kind of interesting relationships. But... When you're doing FM synthesis, all of those weird relationships, like the other multiples, give you this kind of steady textural change instead of... All of this kind of weirdness, right? So... Um, that is the core of FM synthesis. Um, you're just changing the pitch. Now, I wanted to point out one more thing. So when you have, um, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to this one. So so now to sort of drive the home point home a little bit further, let's look at different wave shapes. So let's try a square. Oh crap, I forgot this. Is... <clears throat> let's look at the LFO and we'll do a square on the LFO. Okay, so what you're hearing here, I guess this is illustrating a core difference in the way that FM synthesis is implemented in most synthesizers versus FM synthesis as a concept. So generally speaking, so this is this is FM synthesis. This is what it sounds like to frequently modulate a sine wave by a, a low frequency square wave. And as we turn up the rate, we get these kind of sounds, right? And importantly, we can get these kind of things from bringing in the, the volume and then turning it back down. However, so that's frequency modulation, right? However, if you're going to implement frequency modulation in a synthesizer, uh, it's so much easier and so it's like pretty much the same to do phase. It, you get pretty much the same sound in almost every situation if you do phase modulation instead of frequency modulation they're so mathematically similar that or sonically similar that there's generally no reason to actually implement it as fm synthesis so so that's what ableton's done here you've got phase modulation 
and that's why this sounds like clicks instead of the doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee. so yeah interesting to note um <clears throat> uh let's try Yeah, we don't even really get the pitch down from this guy either. So if we wanted to make this guy more wavy, this interface is, uh, wait, can I? Yeah. Now we're getting more of a... Now we're getting more of a pitch down. Um, this is probably a more mathematical way to do this. Basically, what we're doing... Uh, I shouldn't get into this. This is a complicated subject. <laughs> but, um... Okay, so good enough explanation for now. Uh, before we get too deep in the weeds, I wanted to touch on a couple last little things. So, as you can imagine... Um, the core of this idea being that, like, we're trying to modulate the frequency of one oscillator with another oscillator. Um, it's really important how we plug those oscillators into each other. And this sort of hidden little, not really hidden, but this sort of little part of the operator is actually pretty much the most important part. So... <clears throat> Let's um, let's go like this. So now you'll see. Uh, let's make these all. Yeah, let's make them all different just so we can hear what the hell is going on. Okay, so so now I can hear the first one, the second one, third one, and fourth one. Let me just make those envelopes a little bit different. Okay, cool. So all the envelopes are just big, big old. It's on and then it's off. Okay, so this final one lets you hear all the oscillators on their own. Um, so if something is in the bottom row, that means it's going to the output. We're going to be able to hear that oscillator. However, you'll notice if we do the first one, which is the default setting, now I bring these guys up, nothing's happening. I'm not hearing anything. And the reason for that is, as you can see, the bottom row, the output to the speakers, is the yellow one, A. So our first oscillator. That's the only one that's going to the speakers. What, what this stack means is that this teal one is modulating the frequency of the yellow one, right? So B modulates A, which means that B doesn't go to the speakers. It just goes to oscillator A, right? And now, it's following along the stack, C also does not go to the speakers. It doesn't even go to A. It doesn't even modulate A. It modulates B. So now, however, if I turn this off, doing this does nothing, right? Because C is not going to the speakers, C is not plugged into A. C is only plugged in to B, right? Similarly, changing D doesn't do jack shit because D isn't plugged into B. D is only plugged into C, right? So that's, you can see that, like how these things are plugged into each other. Bottom row is the output to the speakers. The top row, or like going down this way, this is we're plugging everything in. So <clears throat> there are some cool arrangements that we can figure out here, right? So for example, this one is interesting. Because now this one and this one affect the first oscillator. Again, these guys do not go to the output. Neither does this last one. Uh, they're simply there to modulate the first one. Um, but uh, you can have them both modulating at the same time and get... So now these guys are both modulating A and D just modulates B and C. 
So these guys are changing the texture of this wave. And on top of that, we can change the texture of both of those waves. So we're like changing wave shapes that change wave shapes that change wave. You know what I mean? Like it's like this, that's the kind of exciting and fun part of FM synthesis. Um, so as you can imagine with this sort of setup, really the most important part of this, because your, your level, your volume or whatever of each oscillator is the amount that it's going to modulate the other ones. So if I set this here, that, okay, let's turn this one off for a second. Okay. So that is just one note. It sounds kind of boring. Right? The, the most interesting thing here is like how these change and move. So if we have something like this and maybe this one, maybe we, something like this, I don't know. And then this one comes in at the very end. I keep pressing the wrong button. All right, let's try something like this. Yeah, we can have these sounds that evolve in quite an interesting way. Um, so that's it. That's kind of like a first little touch on FM synthesis. I hope we got something interesting out of that. And I do give private lessons one-on-one -on -one over Zoom. And I would really love it if you signed up. Uh, you can take one lesson. You can take a lesson every two weeks. You can take a lesson every week. You can take a lesson, just drop in once every while, whenever you feel like it. Uh, I'll leave a link to the sign up uh, thing on Calendly. And you don't have to pay until after the lesson, just FYI. So please uh, try it out and feel free to ask me any question. I'll do my best to answer it. And if I really don't know, then I'll give you a refund. Okay. Thank you. And see you next time.